Hey Huskies, so we at ASUW and other organizations want to talk with you about something you might have heard or seen before on campus, which is cultural appropriation. We want everyone to have a good Halloween, but definitely not at the expense of others. So to give a basic definition, cultural appropriation is when you take something from a culture that isn't yours and basically use it for your own purposes. And a lot of times this involves members of the majority culture taking bits and pieces of a minority culture in a way that trivializes it, in a way that misrepresents it and pulls it out of context, or in a way that stereotypes other people. And this, of course, is definitely harmful. And we as Huskies have a commitment to other Huskies to making sure that this doesn't happen on our campus. Greetings. It is the year 2015. If you still think it's acceptable to mock the culture and traditions of a group that you do not belong to, then go ahead. As long as you're comfortable relegating thousands of years of history into a joke or costume. When you paint your face or entire body with brown and black paint attempting to portray a black person or black culture, you're participating in a legacy that contributed to the proliferation of stereotypes such as the happy-go-lucky dark on a plantation, the dandified coon, or what's most popular today, the thug on the street corner selling meat. Blackface was created to dehumanize and parody black people, and that's exactly what it does today. The Black Student Union will not tolerate ignorance or disrespect. Our culture is not a costume. Black first. When it comes to Pacific Islander culture, wearing things like grass skirts, coconut bras, blaze, and island print shirts misrepresent us because... For one, it homogenizes Pacific Islander culture. There's a huge, huge misconception that Pacific Islander cultures are all the same. And for two, it trivializes a lot of items of clothing that are traditionally worn for dance or for traditional um, ceremonies. So when it's worn for parties or luau's, it feels disrespectful. From pretending to be crazy and wearing a straitjacket to being physically disabled, emulating aspects of physical or mental disability is appropriative of disability culture. Off-limits costumes are things like pretending to be a mental patient, um, pretending to be a disabled veteran, pretending to be blind or deaf, etc. It's never okay to use an aspect of someone's identity as a costume. One costume we mix around every year is drag. Drag is an art form that is deeply woven into the history of the queer community that serves as a vehicle of self-exploration, commenting on traditional gender roles and the expectations associated with them. Although dressing and drag can be lots of fun, it's also incredibly important to keep in mind that if you choose to if you choose to dress in drag, make sure that you aren't perpetuating harmful stereotypes that lead to high rates of violence against the trans community. If your costume has a punchline, it should never be gender expression or gender identity. When you appropriate our culture, you take part in the over-sexualization of women in our community. You assume that all the people in our culture look one way, ignore our diversity, and add on to the stereotypes used against us. And you devalue our traditional clothing, our festivities, our religions, our histories, and make us feel like we should be ashamed of it. You enjoy taking our culture, our traditions, but refuse to acknowledge our oppressions, our struggles, and the racist systems that were put in place to exclude us. We ask that this Halloween and any other time of the year, you avoid dressing up like us. For example, no sombreros, no ponchos, no fake mustaches, no Day of the Dead symbolism, but it's not just limited to these. Just remember, if you're questioning whether something is offensive or racist, it means it probably is. Appropriating Asian culture is not only hurtful to the Asian community, but it also shapes how many people perceive gender roles. For example, dressing up as a flower princess with the thigh-high slit in the skirt or as a geisha um, only serves to fuel what many perceive to be, or what is yellow fever, where many men see Asian women as objects to be, con to be conquered or, or trophies to be won. And by dressing up as these um, Asian princesses, you only serve to fetish fetishize Asian women and objectify them. Dressing up in a Fu Manchu costume or a geeky nerdy Asian costume also plays a role in uh, hurting the Asian men who often struggle to see themselves as leaders within the community and they often society often perceives Asian men to be nerdy, geeky, very studious, 
very weak. Uh, while there are many examples that point to the contrary. Finally, unless you are a kung fu or karate master, don't dress up as one. While most people think that martial arts are very physically focused, uh, martial arts also incorporate many spiritual and philosophical values. And simply dressing up in a black belt and a judo gi really undermines the thinking and the beliefs that many Asian Americans have when they're practicing those martial arts. And it's a part of their lifestyle, not just some kind of costume that they can put on for the night. So now that you've heard some stories from fellow Huskies, we want to encourage everyone to keep an eye out for cultural appropriation. Remember, you might only be wearing the costume for one night, but other people wear the stigma for life.